HISD Dance would like to remind you to be safe while dancing. Make sure that you're wearing proper dance attire and that you clear the space around you. If you're dancing on the carpet, wear bare feet. But if you're dancing on hardwood floors or hard surfaces, make sure to wear dance shoes or non-slippery socks. Get ready to have a great time. Hi, I'm HISD dance teacher Justine B. Jow. Hola, soy profesora de baile at HISD. And today's lesson is in three parts. La lesión de hoy es uh, en tres partes. A parte uno, the dragon dance. A parte dos, the lion dance. And a parte tres, the Chinese ribbon dance. Today we're going to be celebrating Chinese culture as we get ready for the Chinese New Year, also known as the Lunar New Year because it relates to the um, cycles of the moon, right? Whether the moon is in a new moon phase, a full moon phase, or in between. The Chinese New Year always begins at the new moon and then lasts till the full moon. So for this year, 2021, it will begin on February 12th. Now, there are lots of legends um, surrounding the Chinese New Year, but one of the legends that people um, tell and retell from generation to generation is that at this very special time of the Chinese New Year, a monster named, um, named Year, you would say it differently in Chinese, would come and um, the villagers were scared. They wanted good fortune. And so the monster was afraid of the color red so the villagers would decorate in red to scare the monster away. The monster didn't like loud noises. So the Chinese people would drum to keep the monster year away. And they didn't like bright, bright, um, bright lights. So they would do fireworks to celebrate the Chinese New Year and keep this monster named Year away. This way, they could promise good fortune in the new year. So at the time of the, um, the Lunar New Year, the Chinese New Year, also called the Spring Festival, people in China get seven whole days off from work to celebrate with dance, food, remember people who have passed and come together for good fortune prosperity, and wonderful thoughts for the new year. Aparte uno, the dragon dance. Now, you and I are going to learn about both the dragon dance and the lion dance today. Do you want to know a secret? Sometimes, not even adults know the difference. There are so many pictures or videos of the lion dance that are named the dragon dance and the dragon dance that are named the lion dance. Even newscasters sometimes confuse the two dances. So if you can remember the information today about the dragon and the lion dance and be able to tell them apart, you are going to be ahead of most adults. The dragon dance is really neat. I have a picture of it right here. Lots of people hold long sticks with a dragon attached. And then they synergize or work together to move the dragon around. The dragon is meant to, to bring good fortune and 
sometimes it wraps itself around a globe or a pearl um, symbolizing wisdom. The dragon dance always has an odd number of dancers. Do you know what an odd number of dancers means or what an odd number is? We'll go over that today. Now, each dancer holds one of the sticks of the dragon. I'm going to show you my tiny dragon now. dancer in the dragon dance would hold a stick to a very large dragon. Mine is very tiny, okay? And work together to move fast and furiously, swooping and charging like a dragon might. The energy of the dragon dance is wild and wonderful, flowing and moving. The Chinese dragon dance is over 2,000 years old. Oh, <gasps> that's really old. When we talk about the Charleston, the Charleston is a little over 100 years old. And when we talk about tap, it's a few hundred years old. But when we talk about Chinese dance, it's thousands of years old. And so this tradition has been going on a really, really long time. It dates back to the Han Dynasty. And if you remember, I said that Chinese dragon dances are only done in odd numbers. Let's look at some numbers and see if they are odd or even numbers. If they are odd numbers, we know that we could do a dragon dance with that many people. But if it turns out to be an even number, that won't bring us good fortune with our dance. So we're not gonna do a dragon dance with an even number of dancers. Okay, dancers. So today we talked about how dragon dancers dance in odd numbers. And so today we're gonna to talk about how to figure out if something is an odd or an even number. Let's see if we could do a dragon dance with these numbers. So let's first count our rolls of tape together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you may or may not know if six is odd or even. But if you didn't know, I'm going to show you a simple way to tell. We're going to divide the stack into two. One on this side, one to the other side. And if they have the same number in each stack, and they make a straight, even line across the top, then we know they're even. So let's check. We have one, two, three on this side, one, two, three on this side, and they make an even line across the top. Six is an even number, and we would not want six people dragon dancing. Now we have a stack of books. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books total. And let's divide them into two stacks. One, and let's see if they are odd or even, if there's the same number of books or a different number of books in each stack. Let's count this one first. 
One, two, three, four, five. Five on this side, and let's count the others. One, two, three, four. Five and four are different numbers. So I'm thinking that this is odd, but let's add our ruler to C. Oh, notice how there's space over here between the ruler and the book, but not on this side. This is definitely an odd number of books. So nine is an odd number, and we could definitely do a dragon dance up with nine dancers. Are you ready for one more? I love Pokemon, and I have these three Pokemon sets. One, two, three. If I divide them into two stacks, let's see how many I have on each side. Over here I have one, two, and on this side I only have one. Is that odd or even? So that is three an odd or an even number. Oh, my stacks aren't even. That means three must be an odd number. And if it's odd, we can definitely dragon dance with that many dancers. So we have learned all about the dragon dance. The dragon dance can have any number of odd dancers like three, five, nine, seven, or 11. But the Chinese lion dance is very different. You can tell a Chinese lion dance because it only includes two dancers usually. How many? Two. And two is even. If we divide my two fingers into two columns, there's one and one, and they meet up. They are even. Yes? So Chinese lion dancer, dances include only two dancers most of the time. And the dancers um, work together or synergize to become the front of the lion and the back of the lion. They wear fabulous costumes, like in this picture here. And here you can see a soldier meeting a Chinese lion. In this picture, you can see a Chinese lion standing tall. And in this picture, you can see that there are people underneath the costume. There's one person who has the head and the front two feet and another person who holds on to the other person's hips and creates the back of the lion and its back two legs like this. And the people work together to create the dance. So in this picture right here that we saw before of the Chinese lion dancers up tall, the front dancer with the head has actually jumped on top of the back dancer's shoulders and the back dancer is holding him up high with the mask on his head. So cool. It takes great balance and synergy to work together as a Chinese lion dancer. Chinese lion dance costumes cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So today I brought a Chinese lion mask that myself and some of my students created together. The Chinese lion dance is thousands of years old and dates back to the Tang Dynasty. Whereas dragon dancers move with great force 
and um, really carve out the space. Chinese lion dancers are known for being curious and a little mischievous. People in China during the Chinese New Year many times will have red envelopes filled with money that they feed to the Chinese lion dancers. They believe that given the, giving the Chinese lion a donation in a red envelope will bring them good luck and fortune in the new year. Our next dance is the Chinese ribbon dance. And like the other two dances that we learned um, from China, the lion dance and the dragon dance, the Chinese ribbon dance is also over a thousand years old. It relates back to the Tang Dynasty when an emperor named Tang fell asleep and had a dream of fairies dancing in a moon palace garden. The fairies were wearing long robes and later the Emperor Tang had um, dancers recreate his dream with ribbons. While the ribbons flow smoothly, the dancers create very sharp and dramatic movements, rhythmic movements with their bodies to create the flowing movements with the ribbon. And today, you and I are going to get a chance to explore the Chinese ribbon dance together. So ideally, you would have a beautiful red ribbon to use like mine. And usually in class, I have one for each of my dancers. But today, since you may be at school or at home without me, um, I would love if you would find something like a ribbon. Do you know of anything like a ribbon? Perhaps a piece of party streamer, like this party streamer I have here. Maybe your mom and dad has a piece of party streamer. Maybe, you have a paper towel you can hold on to, or your parents have a scarf you can hold on to, or a piece of fabric that will flow kind of like a ribbon flows in the air. If you don't have any of those things, maybe a piece of toilet paper could be used, or even a smaller ribbon you might use for your hair. Remember, if you're using something that is not yours, ask a parent, family member, or friend if it's okay first. I'll give you just a moment to get your ribbon now. And if you're at school, teachers, now you can hand out our party streamers for our dancers to use for the Chinese ribbon dance. Great job, dancers, getting something that you can use for the Chinese ribbon dance. Make sure that whatever you got to use is soft 
So like this ribbon is made out of fabric, if it were to hit my arm or my face, it's not going to hurt. Make sure that your item is soft as well. Now, because we're at home and not everybody has a traditional Chinese ribbon, we're not going to use the Chinese ribbons with a stick. But I wanted you to know that usually you would have a stick and your ribbon would be attached to the end of your stick. And then you would dance and move the stick and the ribbon would move as well. But today we don't have the stick and we are just going to use our ribbon scarves, toilet paper, whatever it is you have to dance with for the Chinese ribbon dance today is fine, okay? Now, the second thing I wanted to mention is that usually at the beginning of the Chinese ribbon dance, there's a very special way to fold the ribbon so that it looks like a flower, but it is so complicated. The idea behind the Chinese ribbon dance is that usually it starts with the ribbon looking like a flower. And when the big dancers begin dancing, you almost don't even notice it. But then suddenly the dancers let go of the knot that's holding the flower, the ribbon into the flower, and it unleashes in a big surprise for the audience. So for today, you and I are just going to roll our um, ribbon or scarf around our hand so that we get that big surprise too. And then once it's rolled up, you'll notice that you take the end of it. You hold the end of it and the rest together so that when you go to let go of part of it, the other part remains in your hand, okay? So let's try that. Let's wrap it around our hand. And then hold on to the end. See if you can hold on to the end and prepare. Okay, and let's try just a few shapes with our ribbon. So let's try a swirl. Let's see if you can make a big circle with your ribbon. Hold on to it, hold on to that end, and get ready. Let's surprise our audience with a big circle to start. Can you make a swirl with your ribbon? Great job, dancers. If yours gets twisted up like mine, that's okay. Just untwist it. Now, dancers, let's see if you can make a zigzag. Zigzags are sharp straight lines that go from one side to the other. Here we go, zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag. And we can go up and we can go back down. High five, that looks amazing. Can you go high and low in a wave? Up high, down low, up high, down low, in a wave, wave. You guys have done great. Let's review really quickly. Let's start with the swirl. Can you go from the swirl to a zigzag? Let's see. Down and up. Now let's move into the wave, up high, down low, up high, high, down low, up high. And lastly, let's try an X. We have to go up, across and down, up, 
across and down, up, across and down, up, across and down. X. Can you do it too? And let's try one more for a challenge. I love drawing a circle above my head and turning. Oh, turning and making a circle. Oh no, let's try. Here we go. Can you turn and make a circle above your head? It requires you to kind of move your arm up around, up and around. Great job, dancers. High five. I love dancing with a prop. In this dance, so, uh, we are using a ribbon as a prop to dance with. Props are items that help to tell our story. Props are items that help to tell our story. Items that we dance with. So in the Nutcracker, maybe we dance with the Nutcracker and the Nutcracker is our prop. In our Winter Wonderland dance, maybe we take a snowflake and we dance with that. In Cinderella, maybe the lead dancer Cinderella dances with a broom to show that she is cleaning. Any prop we use should enhance our story. Okay, dancers, now is the time we've been waiting for. Let's combine our um, movements that we do with our ribbon in a specific order and then try them all together as a dance. Okay? So just for fun today, let's start with our spiral. Then let's go on to our zigzag, then our high and low, and then let's circle like Miss Gingell did in our spots. Are you ready? Let's try it without the music. We're going to do each movement for two counts of eight. All right, and let's see if we can roll up our ribbon so that we can get that nice surprise the way that Chinese New Year dancers or Chinese ribbon dancers get at the beginning of their dance. Remember, today we're just rolling our ribbon, but Chinese ribbon dancers create a complicated flower with their ribbon. Here we go. Let's try it together. Make sure you hold on to the end of your ribbon, your um, streamer, whatever it is that you're using. Five, six, here we go. Spiral one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep going. Two, you guys are really good at that. Four, five, six, time for zigzag, zigzag one. Two, three, and four, and five, six, seven, and eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, high and low, high and low. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. High and low. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Great. I hope you're not dizzy. That was a lot of turning. You can also turn slow. So your arm can circle while you turn slow, like this. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you can choose how you want to do it if you're getting a little dizzy. 
Now, for the Chinese New Year, and any time you do the Chinese ribbon dance, you probably perform it to traditional Chinese music. The music we're going to play today is inspired by Chinese music. Let me get the music, and then you and I will get started. Roll up your ribbon. some of the moves that you created or tried. I'll sit down as your audience member and have a look. Six, here you go. Wow, that ribbon looks fabulous. I can see you really enjoying the movement and the music. Keep going. and good luck in the new 
year. Happy Chinese New Year! Have a great day, dancers. Adios! Bye!